Hi everyone, this is Ben Lavender, New York's favorite British mortgage broker. Welcome to the Madison podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And today I have a very special guest, one of Madison's very own top performing loan officers, Mr. Anthony Grasso. Hi, good morning. Welcome. Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, well, thank you for, for joining us, Grasso. Am I even pronouncing your name correctly? No, no one does. Okay. It's, it, I don't even at this point. I called you and said, hey, Ben, it's Grasso. Like, yeah. I said that on the phone. It's Grosso. Grosso. But, but then it's like it's gross. It's No one wants to say it. It's been 10 years as a cop. I even said Grosso myself okay. just because. This makes it easier for everybody. You pick. It's either so, way. Grosso, well, now that, now that I know, I don't want to disrespect you and continue to say. Whatever you got. Listen, okay. I, I'll do it myself. So no biggie. Grosso, say if it ain't no so. That's yeah. like some old. I always say grosso, grosso. Fabulous. I don't care. Just call me. Cool, man. So again, thank you for joining us. I know that we don't have a ton of time, so yeah. we, we can jump uh, right into it. Let's before we get into like the specifics of the business, how you run the business, because um, you have a very, very interesting background, and I think a lot of the entrepreneurial spirited people that are watching this uh, will really benefit from listening to you right because you have your hands in a few places and yeah. you you know what what i find impressive about you is not just your ability to generate business and grind and all that stuff but how you very very carefully and you have planned your lifestyle in conjunction with that yes right so because i know that you're cognizant of that with your wife and your kids you want to be present so yeah we'll get into that too but just to, to kind of start off let's let's go to the beginning what made you jump into the mortgage business and feel free to to go back yeah. to uh, yeah i'll go back to get there yeah because uh so basically i started as a as a cop 2007. um first day on the job first arrest stuck with a needle filled with heroin shared with a hooker. You were? First day. Like you attacked? No, 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 just in her bag, stealing magazines. I'm like, I oh. got this, she's going down. Yeah. She'll do life, uh, nothing. She's been a hooker there for 30 something years. Nice. Um, so that was my first day. Like, I'm not gonna be here too much longer. Gotcha. Like I just knew, like it, it, it wasn't for me, but you do a six month academy, you get, you know, screamed at, beat up, yelled at, and then you're like, okay, well now I'm gonna quit. So. The goal was just kind of make it through, but I was always interested in real estate. It was something that, uh, you know, my aunts from, you know, straight off the boat, Italian, gotcha. can't pronounce, they still can't pronounce my name right, <laughs> but they're all millionaires because they own, you know, multifamily buildings and, and Greenpoint, go. things yeah. like that. Nice. So that was always my goal. Um, so once I got on the job, that was it. I got my real estate license just to buy my own properties. And this was, well, this what, is those, what year yeah. was... Well, you were, you said Port Authority, right? 07 Port 07. Authority, 08 real estate license. I went oh, right to it. Oh, it was that quick. Yeah, because like, I was like, I just want to get into this. And it was more like, hey, when I retire, I have, I'll have stuff. Because most people when you retire, listen, you, you make a good salary, but it's not enough. You're going to need something else. So I was kind of course. building my something else. Um, as I started that whole process, like once I got licensed, then everybody at work was like, hey, I'm looking for a house. So I yeah. was a real estate broker. I was a real estate agent, soon to become a broker. But... I started my own thing there. So basically I only worked with people I knew who were on the job and kind of through that, my reputation kind of grew. But I mean, I probably did you know over a hundred houses through my years as a cop. Wow. And I took every penny of that and invested it in my own stuff. Gotcha. So my intro into the mortgage market was really, you know, 10 years of investing on my own and gotcha. dealing with these clowns that like, once you get to a certain point, like nobody understands what I do. Yeah. Very few people could, even I barely understand what I do. Like I have Nicole and an amazing processing team, but like putting it on paper, you know, and especially like you have a job, you have a side job, they treat self-employed completely different. Yeah. And you want to take your tax losses, but you got to keep it on enough to, to start supporting five, six, seven loans. So what happens, I was always sending people to mortgage people. And if I probably had met Madison sooner, like anyone here, especially you, I probably wouldn't be a loan officer because I just got tired of sending people and they'd be like, hey, this guy did this. He didn't answer my questions here. So I was like, you know what? I'm already a real estate broker. I have my investment properties, which is kind of like my home base. Yeah. I'm like, I'll just get my mortgage license. I was like, even if I do the people I'm already working Basically, for. Basically, if no one's doing it right, I'm going to do it myself. That's the thing. only thing. If I had to be an attorney, that'd be my next step. Yeah. Because I'm like, I just get tired <laughs> of people. Like, you know, it's just like, oh, I'm, I'm dealing with, even if it's not someone I referred. I'm dealing with the consequences of someone who 
who has no say in like you know like their mortgage broker is ruining the process for us and it shouldn't yeah. be this way and unfortunately the mortgage broker say if, if we're getting a referral from a realtor we are a reflection of them because yes. they refer and so that's what you were experiencing exactly it was a lot of that and and so ended up happening i was like you know what i'm just gonna do it myself not looking at anything crazy i have my network and that's my big thing is like my network is my and, and know, what year was this the mortgage was only three years ago. Oh, is that recent? Yeah, yeah no, one, no one knew. I, I came in and almost left as quick as I came in. Yeah. Because it's yeah. I worked for banks. And I'm like, I literally was sleeping with the enemy that I hated for the last 13 years. Yeah. I'm like, this is why everyone hates mortgages. They take forever. You know, they're asking for things a thousand times. Someone like me, you would I will never get a loan through a big bank. By the time they're done, they ask for like, you know, triple paperwork for a W-2 you know, one person income W-2 job takes them 60 days. I would be, you know, I'd probably be 2017 waiting for one of my loans to close. It's, you know? it's a combination. So this is, as you know about me, I was in retail for seven years yeah. before we switched to broker. So I found looking back at it because you only know what you know now and now that we're enlightened in the broker channel. But something that was I found kind of funny once we sh switched to broker is that the local lenders in New York, it's either it's basically everything that you said that, you know, they're slower and all that stuff because they know that you can't go anywhere. But it was a combination of those lenders having their own internal overlays for the investors that they're sending it to. Yeah. And the second part was the, was the worst part is the underwriters inability to correctly understand guidelines. Yeah. So they'll take they'll look at a guideline that says I need, you know, 30 days uh, of worth of pay stubs and they'll be like, oh, for some reason, let's multiply that by three. Give me yeah. 90 days. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. So that, that was really the, you know, the issue that we came across and, you know, broke a channel. We're, we're enlightened now, but please continue. Oh, this, yeah, no, this is so. So I, and I was literally I was doing it, worked for some. I worked for, oh, God, in, in the span of me getting my license, I worked for Contour and then Nationwide. Like if hmm. you ever like wanted to hate yourself more, you go yeah. work for those two places at once <laughs> and do that to your friends. It's like no two comment. friends I can't even talk to anymore because I'm like, it was such a bad process. And I, I, I'm with them. I just couldn't do anything about it. And, you know, one of the bigger points is to me is their models are very strict. Yeah. For me, it's like I, I'm sometimes doing the broker gen where we found you or selling the house. And then I'm also on the mortgage side. So like money was a little less relevant to me. I'd rather use what I can to like offset them and do like incentives, things I, can't, I couldn't do. They were like, you can't do that. I'm like, I don't need to make X amount of dollars. Let's just let, let's trim it down. Give him a better deal. Like, no, we don't do that here. Yeah. Like they had no flexibility. So to me, interesting. Yeah, I was on my way out, ran into a mutual friend that met Sean. And yeah, he, he brought me Sean in field, Caulfield, man, the myth, the myth yes. legend. We love you, man. Yes, it's, uh, I'm going to take the title belt from him. Just don't tell yeah. him. Come. <laughs> just yank it from his office. <laughs> so that's how I ended up here. And then I was like, at first for a while, I told you, like, just felt like something was not right. I'm like, wait, I can do this? I'm like, yeah, whatever makes the client happy. I'm like, no, no, seriously, guys, yeah. what, what can we really do here? And, and that's that's why it's stuck. And that's why it worked out really well for me because I already had the network. Everyone awesome. knows me as kind of the real estate guy from there because I also, when I retired four years ago now, mm -hmm. I'm the only person who ever left the Port Authority willingly at 10 years and yeah. gave up the pension, the benefit. I mean, the pension I have, it's coming later. But the medical, but it's not maxed out, I imagine. Oh no, Which it's not even yeah. maxed out. Yeah, I can barely. Yeah, it's yeah. not. The guy was laughing when I was doing my final numbers. He's like, I think you could, you know, maybe lease a car or, or something by then. Yeah. But that wasn't that wasn't my, you know, my life was to live the life I wanted to. So anyway, that's that's how it kind of all tied out. But when I left that, that's you know, I became very close with the union. I do a lot of sponsorship. So anything kind of police related, I'm involved in anyway. And yeah. So, yeah. So please expand on that so a large part of your network referrals now for both mortgage and real estate yeah. i imagine it's nypd uh, yeah port authority nypd well we're all kind of a family so it's like the port authority has friends that are nypd nypd mta anyone really gotcha. law enforcement even fdny so what happens is like we go to work and we talk about food what were you for lunch yeah. what posts we got and mostly houses real estate mm. so that's how like my name was always up around because if you're if you're buying a house what are you doing at work you're sitting in there in the break room for an hour you're talking to people about it yeah and what happened is the power of my net like my network started showing later on when you know 50 guys bought a house for me and they're like oh you got to use grosso like, and like three people are saying that to you like i still get phone calls now they're like hey i was talking i literally just thought about buying a house and he's like four people mentioned your name so, so that, that is kind of the network. For those who watch this and, you know, hear the term work your sphere of influence, yes. this is what people mean, yeah. right? This is a prime example. So 
Take notes and implement. Continue, yeah. please. And it was, uh, the big thing is it was always genuine because I work yeah. with them. So am I going to screw you over? I have to see you tomorrow. Yeah. And that was my whole basis. Like, I don't care about any particular deal. I care about you being happy at the end. You know, there's deals that I gave throughout the year. Like, I cut as much. I kicked everything back to them just because it was a, a shit show or something that wasn't even my fault. But the whole point is, like, I want you to remember that you had a good experience. And yeah. that has been our driving force, really, through everything. So that was all, always our number mm -hmm. one. So still, it, it real estate, more. Someone will call me be like, hey, I'm looking for a house. Like, can you do both? I'm like, you know, I, I've stopped. I have a real estate team, you know, about seven agents now. And mostly law yes. enforcement or, you know, actually, everyone's law enforcement at this point. So... They're all out there Sweet. too. Yeah, so like, you know, I worked with them as cops and now they're still there actively working. Mm. They remember me as, you know, the guy who left that place. <laughs> so yeah. it gives me a lot of street, I don't say street cred on that one, that like everyone knows I don't, really don't care about much. And that the reason is because I built a whole separate life outside of this one no one was looking with investment properties and I made my pension. That's why I was able to leave. So you, you created your own pension. Yes, I don't, and I. that's why I was like, whether I work with you or not is kind of like it, it'll be to your benefit more than it is to mine. And that's yeah. what I kind of portray and people know it like, it's, doesn't matter. I'm either doing your loan or I'm going to be golfing. I mean, <laughs> you guys pick I'm good either way. That's the life. But I don't want like I just don't want stress at this point in life. Yeah. And the deals can be the deals can be stressful. But honestly, we have a solid team here and we yeah. knock out like 60 percent of what issues go through a loan just with the broker model in general. Yeah. So. Exactly. It's just less conditioned. It's easier upfront underwriting, yeah. upfront pre-approval. It just yep. it makes the transaction easier. Yes. And you know what's funny is that, like I remember, like back in the day when I was closing, you know, three to six loans a month. Yeah. These days we're closing twenty loans a month. Yeah. I have less stress closing twenty loans a month than back to doing five a month. I agree. Right, yeah. and I definitely a hundred percent exactly attribute that to our processing team, our operations team, and you know just the the education that Madison gives us. You know the yeah. amount of training that we have and how we pre-approve our clients upfront carefully. But that's what creates a stress-free uh, transaction. We don't want to bother the client in the middle of one of the most stressful situations yeah. in their life because I say this all the time, man, it's like buying a house isn't how it looks on HGTV, you know, yeah. you're not skipping through meadows. It's like one, two or three, ah, yeah. ah, take number two. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's stressful. So if we can take as much of that stress out as possible and then we will and look it benefits not just them but it benefits us as well because we'll be we're able to perform better for our clients because our stress level is low yeah and i find that like going back to what you're saying about retail and the inflexibility the, the truth about it is like most most of the loan offices that are still in retail are there because the margins are higher yes right our margins are lower but our ease of life and our volume makes up for that exactly. which is something that i feel they don't understand so anyway, back, back to kind of like what you were saying about the multiple businesses. How do you, how do you even balance all that stuff? Because to the average person, it's like, that, that's a lot. You, you know, you've got a real estate brokerage, brokerage you're running a mortgage team, you've got yeah. investment properties. I know your wife's business, you're, you're involved so, to some yeah, this, degree as the well. So yeah, the secret, this is the, the ultimate secret is I am actually super lazy. So that's I weird. will figure out the way to get to, no one will get from A to B faster than me, ever. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do. I figure out like, okay, what works, what doesn't, where can I cut? And that's why this model's fit in because it already kind of, it's doing what it does. Like I could put a loan in and it's like an hour and a half worth of me conversation because I've automated backend, I've automated text messages. So like when it comes to the brokerage model, I just pay all my agents really well. I mean, yeah. they get six splits because it's like run your own show. I'm here as like, advice as guidance but like i'm not giving you leads i'm not i didn't ever did any of that stuff so i couldn't even teach people how to sell because i don't know how to sell yeah. i hate the, you know i hate taking leads i don't want to talk to strangers like i'm the worst person to come to for sales advice but you but don't you don't need to sell because your reputation is so I strong don't. and you do the right thing yes but like someone you just come to me and you're brand new you're like i want to get in real estate yeah well how do i tell you you might not have the network i had so it's like well how do you get started it's like just get one and make that person your entire world. Like, mm. and every person you could talk to, just talk about your real estate. Be like, oh, I wanna find my taxes. I know that's not what we do, but I learned everything by just trying to be helpful. And then little by little, it'll turn to one deal. And once you got one deal, if by three deals, you're not working mostly referral, 
then you need to keep tweaking your process because that's literally I've, I've never advertised. You won't see my face. I would say you won't see my face on a bench, my my kindergarten photo, whatever these real estate agents use to post up their you know pictures from <laughs> 1975. Like you're not gonna. You see can rip on real estate agents because you all want yourself. Oh, I can do both. So, yeah, I can. Yeah, I can, you can, I can go. I, we we gonna do that. My yes. business will go. Yeah, no. Well, that's why like I don't. You know, I know a lot of my interactions with real estate agents are from a different side than you. Um, dealing with them in a transaction, trying to get an offer through. So my, you know, my team was built off with people like us. So I have customs agents, I have uh, uh, Port Authority police. So like, we're all, we're all kind of in the same boat. And the thing is this, that it's side jobs for most of them. No one's really full time and you don't really need to be full time. I think you're better off not being full time because interesting. you're not dependent on one sale. Yeah. You doing a mortgage with me, or you ever like coming to me to sell your house. It doesn't matter if it doesn't go through. My bills are still paid. And that financial independence is what gives me a big push when I'm out there because it's really, I'm here to help, but there's like, you know, and it works for, it's mutually, you know, beneficial, but it doesn't, I'm not dependent on it. I don't have to force you into something. And that's a big key with a lot of real estate Huge. agents. Huge. You know, like when you feel like you saw three houses and they're like pushing you into one. Like I have one person, I still to this day is a record, me and, cause Janet's also licensed. She helped me for a while too. When I was like doing midnights and managing the properties. Jen is she, your, your my wife. wife. Yeah. Got it. So she would do some showings as well. Um, we showed over a hundred houses to one and they were all Levittown houses. If gotcha. you know Levittown, yeah. they're all exactly the same. Yeah. There's only, I've seen every variation you can do of that house, but like it, it didn't matter. And they're friends that we're still friends, you know, going on today. But that's like one of our big perks is that we just, my team, they're good. They're here. They don't care though. They know if you're with me, we'll eventually get something. We're going to get the job done one way, shape or form. And that is what they portray to their people. And they've all been doing like, I was looking at a couple of ages, like they're doing solid numbers, you know, while working full-time jobs. And the other benefit too, is that like they're running their stuff independent. So outside of me kind of monitoring, they're continuing to add, make sure that licenses don't expire. They do their own stuff. I'll supply signs, things like that. But I've cut it down to, you know, the bare minimum, the broker's just, I'm just a transaction piece at this point. I'm the broker yeah. that needs, they could all be their own broker, but like my branding and my marketing is already there in place for me being, you know, a cop and that's already there. So that, they're just that using it. their conversion, you know, that yes. brand, your brand is important. Yes. And that's, and they, and they kind of run their own shows off of what I help. They could easily see I'm an entrepreneur. I'd be like, I'm not going to even give up the 10%. I'll do it myself. Yeah. But then you're picking up the MLS, do you're doing everything. So it's almost like, the more people that come in, the merrier. Like I'm more based on the real estate model as now my agents also say like, hey, I want to have a good process and they'll send over the mortgages. So I'm in the point of like where I'm on a lot of the deals because it might be one of my real estate agencies like we need this to close. We need somebody good to like, oh, can I use Anthony? I'm like, yeah, sure. So as long as it's not FHA, I'm somewhere in the middle yeah. on both of. So I just took the same network and I doubled my exposure so, to so it. So the reason for that, for those that, of you that don't know, is that if you're an agent or a real estate agent or broker and a loan officer, you cannot write an FHA loan and be on as an agent, right? You can only do that with conventional. Yeah. So go ahead, sorry. Yeah, so that's, you know, so the model itself, it, it's really hands off. And same thing, investment properties, I have systems set up for tenants and notifications. And I just got a property manager, but up until two Automate years ago. as much as humanly possible. Everything. And I find the problem and whatever it is, we fix it and make sure it never happens again. And little by little, we get a process that we have, which is what I did with mortgages. In the beginning, I could only handle X amount. And I was like, you know what? Everyone keeps asking me the same five questions. <laughs> so I'm going to make a video or an email that answers those five questions before you ask. Yep. And I would automate them through the process. All right, this is a good time for this. This is a good time for this. And everyone by the end be like, this was amazing because I've also been on 30 loans myself, you know, doing my own process, my own mortgages. And like, where was I annoyed? Okay, so let's make sure we don't have and that. And you recently refiled a bunch of them, right? Yeah, yeah we, did, uh, we, did a, we did a whole lot. I still have one purchase in the works, which now I got hit with this FEMA flood thing. Uh, yeah. But, you know, like it's, it's a lot that goes into it. But I just learned to be like, all right, where are the pinch points? Let's fix them. And that's it. And little by little, things just get easier. So I could run the mortgage, I could run the real estate brokerage without being there at all. I don't have to be anywhere. That's awesome. Because they do everything from grab the commission checks, deposit it, everything's automated, their payments to them. So there's literally nothing to be done for yeah. that. And for that, they get paid well. I could probably take more, but I just want happy people. If you're in mm -hmm. my network supporting me living how I want to live, we're good. Of course. I gotcha. And to me, it doesn't, like you were saying in the beginning, that's not laziness, that's efficiency. Yes. That's just, the truth. It's like, it's, you, you want to find the most efficient way because the truth is, is that it, 
it serves the customer better. If you're trying to anticipate what their questions are based on prior experiences, and you're addressing that up front and you have a system for it, it's better for the client. Yes, oh no, it's, it's, it's just like a, a mindset I can't shake. And it's a lot of probably reading, the, you know, we, we share a lot of the same no. interests, but I did a lot of Tim Ferriss and no. and like, you know, the four hour work week type stuff. And just, I tried virtual assist. I try to, I try a lot of stuff and some things work, some don't, but it sticks. The point was just to keep going with it until I could find a way. And most of my stuff is based on people being like, now that you can't do that. I'm like, excellent. I will now do it. That yeah. is my <laughs> ultimate mission to do it. When I left, they were like, you should retire. Even the, even some of the union people like, listen, no one has ever left this job that didn't come back a year later begging for it. They're like, do you sure no, you no. don't want to do a leave of absence? You come back. I'm like, nope, burn the bridge. I'm out. It has this to be you this way. Plan, a plan B. There was no plan B. And sometimes even now they'd be like, cause some of the shifts we had, like there was a whole fire section that if I had got into this like firefighting at the airport, basically. So yeah. like when the planes come in, sometimes you don't know that there's, there's, fire department there for hot breaks or things that go on. If I would have taken that shift, it was like 12 hour tours every other weekend. I might not have left because it was a better schedule. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad I did because this is what's better than every other weekend off is every weekend off. And Anthony, when you did leave, did you have investment properties at the time? Oh, I was already set up. Yeah, we didn't do this. Like I had everything set up. We were, I was working towards this probably after like year six. So from the time that you actually like thought about leaving the Ports Authority and like doing the real estate thing. What, did you buy investment properties coincidentally or that was like calculated, I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna need this income? Uh, so it started as, like I said, just have something extra. I just knew mm -hmm. I needed to have them. And then probably around like year five or six, we had a couple, like I had a property that we owned. We had done like a cash out, I could, I could do this all day, but like cash out refi, we bought it cash, completely renovated it, got it up and running. Then we cashed out that. Like Sweet. we were making a good amount a month. I'm like, you know what? Let's just do this. We pulled that out and bought two in the same year, Got like it. a couple blocks away from each other. Thanks. And what we were making on that one, like our returns were like 20%. This is like 2012, yeah. 20, well, 2014. You stole them back then. Oh, so dude. I mean, we we're making, Ooh. you know, we were making 20, 25% on stuff. I'm like, kind of hit me. This could replace what I'm doing. Like I'm getting this per month mm -hmm. and I can easily replace myself. So right around there, you know, collided with, you know, we were getting stuck a lot at work, 16 hour shifts. Now I did midnights because it was easier for me. Mm -hmm. I can go to, I go to work at 10, come home six in the morning. I didn't miss my wife, I didn't miss my kids. You have a party, I'm there, I'm just going to work. You know, like I didn't miss anything. But then what started to happen is we were getting forced. So I'd be like, hey, listen, we're shorthanded. So I'd get stuck from six in the morning to two in the afternoon. And then have to sleep somehow in there, manage all my stuff and then get back to work for 10 o'clock at night. That once once I had two kids, that was a lot. I'm yeah. like, I can't, I'm gonna, yeah, I could retire. I could have technically retired at 46. It's like, I'll be dead by 47 <laughs> yeah. because you can't run like it's this. It's not worth it. No, so that's how I ended up um, being like, you know what, let me just put this together. Let's see, could we really push this? Because I've read, I'm a big rich dad for guy. You know, that yeah. was like my Bible. That's true, yeah. You know, we bought our first, me and my wife, we bought our first house, we weren't married, but she was living in a basement apartment. I'm like, why don't we buy something together? Like you live upstairs, we'll rent the basement. And then I read Rich Dad Poor that I'm like, hey, so we're closing on the house today, but guess what? Now you're gonna go in the basement and we're gonna rent the upstairs for double and a half of what you would have been paying. So like that's, we did two years of that. We and, took, but a lot of people don't want to do that. You know, no. you, you guys had the discipline, so we're gonna- A lot this. of sacrifice. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Kevin Schmidt the other day. Yeah. When I did my refis, he saw everything. He's like, dude, I was like, this is what he's like. It's very hard to put things off when people were going to the beach. Uh, we were painting houses, getting poison ivy, yeah. like doing all the stuff you do when you're a first time landlord on your own. Um, but that's where I learned plumbing, electrical. I just had to do it because I wasn't paying people to do it. You know, so like that was a good base of what we did, but we gave up a lot during those years. That's why I always say like 25 to 40 is we busted our ass. Yeah. And now, now this now is my time. Yeah, this is my time. And I'm still gonna work, it's just a different type of work anymore. You know, it's like a working towards projects that I want. I don't do anything I don't really want to do. Sounds, it, you know, yeah. it, it is nice. It does sound nice, but the point is like, well, I'm- you're I'm, gonna get bored too, I'm, because you're- The you, goal is never like retire. That's things. what people say like, oh, you could have retired. I'm like, the goal is never retire. Just yeah. keep adapting. Like, this is great. And then eventually you want to change and you know, you become the owner of, you know, I was a real estate agent, you become the broker. And then I run a company and then I manage agents. And this by that, you kind of shift. So that's the whole, that was always the whole mindset. So right, I've always had from 2010, we had investment properties. Yeah. So I got on an 07, 08. First one was 2010. And then it was like every two years. So it only took three years for you to really, yeah, you we know, had by the time base. you started thinking about it. And then we started ripping because that's yeah. when I was, that's when I figured out how to finance. Once I understand the mortgage process, like, and what they were looking for, 
then we built everything around, around what that. they needed. Like, yeah, I could take a ton of losses every year, but this is going to make me unfinanceable. So we were just it's playing. Huge, it's also a huge benefit of working in the mortgage business. Yeah. You know, you know. So we did. So we did a lot of that. Um, and that's what I was like. All right. So we did like lines of credit. I mean, I did stuff that I wouldn't recommend. Definitely wouldn't recommend now. Like Got it. business lines of credit with twelve percent interest, things like that. <laughs> yeah. And like buying it cash to refi it you out. You took some risks. Yeah. You sacrifice and, then, and risks. And then finding out, well, you need to hold it for six months before you could refi out. Like yeah. no one taught me this. I did like no one. I don't have a baseline. Like I said, like of anyone in my family who did this stuff. Anything I did was like. We were the, we are the pioneers in my in my side, my wife's side. They they do real estate, but like no one, everyone's like we're buying it cash or like yeah. I'm the only one who maxed out leverage what, wherever I could. What did your parents do, by the way? My dad worked at a bank for like forty something years. Uh, not my, as a loan officer. I not as a loan no. officer, no. Uh, and my mom worked for the for the board of ed. So yeah, again, very, very safe. Different. Yeah, very safe, safe jobs, pensions, things like that that we don't have anymore. Yeah, unfortunately. So that's why to give up a pension, people are like, how could you do that? I'm like, because just. You know a path you're on. You know what you're going to get. But, you know, it was a calculated decision, calculated risk. Like, what do I have? I already have a pension. Yeah. So what am I staying here for? There's a ton more out there. And I mean, it worked out kind of like caught the mortgage boom <laughs> kind of accidentally <laughs> back into that time. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good time. You bought real estate at a good time. Yeah. Everything was lined up nicely. I mean, I bought something just to compare it to 2014 when we bought. I bought the neighboring house mm. for almost $200,000 more than I bought it when I bought it then. And those numbers were still good. And how, what, what year was each? One was 2014, one was 2018. Damn. Yeah. That's Appreciation. Appreciate it. But they're like, how could you pay more? I'm like, because the numbers still make sense. Yeah. And I know everything about the house. But that person bought that, pro she sold it for me for what she bought it for 10 years ago. So think wow. about that. Got it. You bought it for a price, like the rents now make sense. The rents 10 years ago didn't make sense. Mm. And that's what I've always been like, well, like, what if the market crashes? Like we base all our stuff on cash flow. So if it's cash flowing, that's all we care about. I don't care what I pay for it so much. Yeah. And that comes off in a lot of the mortgage stuff when people start like, oh, they want 562, 500. I'm like, just give them 565. You're not yeah. going to think about it later. I overpaid from what I was told. I overpaid on all the houses I bought. Yeah. Who's laughing now, though? Yeah. No, Because there is no overpaying. If it cash flows, it cash flows. And you also, and you, you bought at a fairly young age compared to most people. Yeah. So you have... You know, because obviously real estate goes up and down, up and down, but it yeah. goes up and down diagonally, right? At a yes. whatever angle. So because of that, it corrects the mistakes of not buying. So I personally, I did the same thing. I bought in an area property a few years ago, that exact same scenario. Everyone's like, Ben, this is a stupid number. You're an idiot for buying in this place. Yeah. And same same thing. It's like, you're a genius now. Yeah. And it's like, because it's about time, and I've spoken about this before too, but... Um, Common saying that, that we hear now is like, it's not necessarily about timing the market, it's your time in the market. Yes. And I feel when it's cash flow related and that fixes everything. That's it. That's, that's, the numbers make sense. The numbers are always guide the deal. So we're getting to a point where now numbers are tighter. So that's when we'll start to back out and be like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, we'll wait it out because this is, then you get the people who are there to flip and who's buying it to sell it higher. That's not our game. It never no. has. Everyone thinks we flip houses. Like I never flipped a house. Yeah. We've always held our stuff. So that's like kind of our, our process. Like once I have the cash but, flow there, yeah. I was gonna say that takes discipline too. Yeah. Because a lot of people see an opportunity to make a quick 100,000 cash yeah. and move on. But you're like, let's think but long But then I became yeah. a mortgage broker and I realized, why would I sell it? I'm just gonna refi it and yeah. take out that money tax free and go do it all over again. Yeah. It made me yeah, like a super villain now. It's key, tax free. Tax, tax free, free yeah, that's no. key. Yes, so. and because it's not. It's, and it's tax not, deductible. Yeah, it's not a taxable event. And if it's an investment property, everything's a write off. That's really like, oh, what are you gonna do for your kid's college? I'm like, this is yours. We'll refi it. This one's now yours. You go pick up the rents. You go yeah. do your stuff. That's your call. You know, that's all. Your, that's everything. Okay, so so this is really really great. Something I, I'd love for you to elaborate on as well is kind of the events that you do for your network as well. Got it. If you'd be so kind. Yeah. So like I said this is going to change. It's a different mindset and a model than most places. I just go to the events. Yeah. That's it. I've had some places where like, hey, you want to set up a booth. No, I don't like I don't want to be a salesman in a booth. I'm here as as you guys. So like most of the places, the events that I go that I know people, I'm just socializing. I yeah. just drink and smoke cigars. Like that's it. We and people will always talk about real estate. No matter where you go. I mean, you guys see it. It's it's the number one conversation anywhere. Yeah. So 
Um, especially now with politics and everything, nobody talks about anything. So it's like, hey, real estate, what's going on in the market? My neighbor sold for this. So wherever I go, once they feel like, oh, he's in real estate, like that's it. That sets the conversation from there. And then it's like, someone's got a problem with the neighbor. Hey, what can I do here? Like I'm jumping in to help problems that, that aren't related to me or real estate or can make me money ever. But what they're seeing is that you're a professional that you helped. And even if they don't need you, they'll remember you. And if someone asks, oh, I need a realtor for this, that's like, that's it. That's the man. That's kind of how it always worked. And that's like, you know, the story. Now the story is more powerful than, you know, me. Like when they're like, especially like the younger guys coming up as cops, like two years on, they're like, you left. Like you left. Yeah. This is the best job we've had. Like we were a good, it was a good salary job. I mean, one of like the top ones in the country. Yeah. Um, but to me, I'm just a weirdo. It's like happiness, life joy. Like I wanted to, I didn't want to that's work way every day rushing to be 46 to be like, okay, now I can finally be happy. Like I that's know. just. That wasn't what I wanted. I was literally rushing every day. Like, okay, one more day there. I'm like, why am I counting down? Like, what's not what we want to be doing? Yeah. So most of my event stuff is just that. Just I'm just literally being a helpful human being well, so, wherever we go. Well, something that you, you said before, it's, it was quick, but it, it's especially interesting because when most people go to networking events, they're like, okay, how can I work the room oh, and God. like get all this stuff? And it's like, to you, it's not even a networking event. You're just going to hang out with your friends yeah. and chill and talk about whatever, whether if it goes to real estate, great. But I think that that's so important because when people see you come off, like I'm here, let's talk about business, let's do business. Depending yeah. on the scenario, it rubs them the wrong way. Always they, did for me. Yeah, and they can see you running, uh, coming from a mile away, especially NYPD, you can yeah, read yeah, people yeah. in a second. Yeah. Right. So it's like, so they know. And that that's so freaking key. It's a it's a very valuable lesson. It's something I mean, you, you figured it out for a long time. I only figured it out a few years ago. Yeah. Just go to an event and be yourself. Who likes you for you. And yeah. the people and the bigger thing is that you're you. You're gonna turn some people off and some people are gonna gravitate towards you. Yeah. You Come be everyone's you, friend. Yeah, you be to you, it will gravitate the people you want to you. Someone like if I'm myself out. Someone who we wouldn't get along with for a loan process, for just as people, human beings in this world, like we're not going to work together. Yeah. So it, it's almost like a That's filtering. Okay. It's a filtering for yourself yeah. because why do I want to deal with someone we don't see eye to eye on a lot of things? So like when yeah, those those networking events where it's like, hey, I'm an accountant. Cool, we should do business. Why? Because you're an accountant and yeah. I need one. Like. Do you get so, along? Has your communication style? Yeah, we just talk, and that's that's yeah. even if I go to an event where I don't know someone. Now yeah. I've done this too, where I've gone to events like, you know, where someone invited me to something. I'm I'm there now. I don't know anyone. There's always someone interesting to talk to. Like I'm gonna find you, and we're gonna have a. I'm going to have a good time. That's it. We're gonna have some laughs. There's always someone like you somewhere. And if I meet one person in a thing that whether it could help you business or not, like that's how you're. Like all I'm gonna say, all my big life events hinge off of one yes, yeah or no. That's how it went. Like I went to. I mean, I'll go. We got. To, I'll go way back when I first was. Uh, I did a computer company when I was in college. Mm. I like always, like I said, I always wanted the entrepreneur thing. Nice. And I used to go to people's houses and fix their computers before like Best Buy Geek Squad, before that was even out. That was like, you're talking like 2002. <laughs> but at one point I had an office. I had really? two technicians. I had a secretary. I was 22 years old playing SOCOM in my parents' basement online. Yeah. You know, and like people would come and drop off envelopes of checks. And like I ran a business that, you know, if you figure back then, I was probably making like $45,000 a year running my own and business. And how, how old were you? 22. Yeah, that's great. great. That's what I was like, I'll never, also, I'll never. Also back then, that yeah. was quite a bit of money. It doesn't yeah. sound like too long ago, but it was. So it's like, you know, that's why I really like, okay, this is, that's what I did back then. But that all hinged on like, my dad said, hey, you wanna come to some networking group? He always had to go to these. So I said yes to one. I met one person who's like, hey, you wanna come to our big networking group? I went there, I became the vice president of that. And then like, it opened up so many doors just because I said yes to that one thing that, like who wanted to go with my dad's friends to a networking group? I was 20 something years old. Yeah. You know, and like who would walk into a room of people and no that's just one what you these did. days, no one would. I know. So yeah. like, that's like all those things. Like when I decide something, like you never know where something's going to take you. And that's how I look at these events. Like you never know who you're going to meet. You never know where it's going to go. I might not find anyone for work, but I might find someone who loves to golf as much as I do. And we'll be out there golfing together. You know, like yeah. it just, if you have that approach that there's always something out there for you, just be out there. Cause you're not gonna get anything from staying home. That's why I was never big like, I mean, social media now, I use social media as a reinforcement to me being a real person. Yeah. Like I'm not looking for random people online, but when I go somewhere and I meet someone, now we're friends, now I get to, like we get to explore a relationship on a different level because now you see how I am, I get to see you, but like Normally that you're wasn't relaxed. this. Yeah. And, and you're not putting on a business. Yeah. Mm, it's just, it's, never, it's, it's like slowly, yeah, like, that's really, I've never had that. 
you know, the, yeah. the whole cold care, like I just, that weirds me out. And I know everyone I work with, we could see through that shit a mile away, so. For sure, and what you were saying before, I, I wanted to revisit or kind of make a point on as well, is that you were saying like, you don't want to force a relationship. Yeah. Which I think that there are exceptions, like if you're in the very beginning of your career, you have to take what you can. Yes. Right, but it's like you're, when, you, when you get to a certain level, and I think this goes with, and this is one of the reasons why you and Madison, in terms of how it works, the efficiency part is key, because when, at a certain level, you can't take everything. Yeah. You have to do business with people who appreciate the way you communicate, basically the way that you do business. So your natural filtering out process is like, it's not about what you can do for me because you can get business from so many people. Yeah. It's right, is this the right person for my business that isn't gonna slow my business down yeah. and will have a good working relationship and genuinely enjoy working with each other. Yeah. And that's a lot of the people I get, they'll be like, we'll start the loan, be like, hey, you wanna go over rates up? Just do whatever you do for yourself. Literally yeah. that's the whole process. Lock me when you need to, tell me what's this. I, I send breakdowns for all the fees and things like that because we do a little different as a brokerage. So like have to explain sometimes, hey, listen, fees start out higher because we're more transparent. Like we can't sneak things in later like other places can. So yeah. I'm like, so like they're like, just do what you gotta do. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's that branding makes it, and trust. Yeah, I'm like, and that's, know it makes the process like, and I would never want to violate that in any way, shape or form. So even if, you know, I could have made more on some deals, I gave them whatever I could. Everyone gets the same deal across the board. You don't have to do the, hey, I called, uh, you know, whatever, Wells Fargo, and they said they could do this. Okay, I'll do better. Like, you already got my better mm. from the start. I don't do the whole, like, yeah, shop me like around and see, because if someone does that to you, like, so they basically just tried to make more money off you for the same thing until they thought they were gonna lose you. Yeah. I'm like, so why would you wanna work with that person in general? So exactly. I definitely don't wanna be that person. Yeah. That's kind of my, you know, that's always my take. I want to, I want people who work like I do, who want to be treated like I do. And that's just kind of how we work it. But yeah. that's why my months, you that's see my months, I can go crazy. But like when we're slow. But you got so much going on, doesn't yeah, affect with you. The refi, yeah, but with the refis, I had my own stuff going on, but like I don't go out looking for business. I, when when things slow down, things slow down. You don't they look pick for up. it, but your, your business practices are so strong that you're able to attract for each transaction, you bring on three more. Yes. Right. So that's, I think that's, that's very important. It is, it's just, you know, when you look in the, in the matrix of mortgages, like, or real estate, it's like, hey, I have X amount of deals this month. I'm like, well, I don't, get, yeah, I don't have, uh, you know, I don't have a number for this month because this month might be two, but the yeah. next month is 10 because those people haven't started looking for a house yet. It just, there's no way to control yeah. the flow. That's the one weakness with the model is if you're like, hey, I need money, I don't have a way to do it. Like, it's just getting out to more events and doing more things. Like, but yeah. if you have time constraints, like, yeah, you know, when I was younger, I could go wherever I wanted to and go to events and sit there for, you know, for five, six hours. Like now it's a little different. Wife, kids, like I don't want to miss things. So it's like, I don't know if I could put in the hours like I used to do in the sense of like, yeah. hey, if we needed to ramp up, I mean, social media is a big plus, like you could reach a lot more people, but then it comes to a point where you don't want to hit the same people. Of course. Over and yeah. over and over again with the same stuff. And if you really wanted to, you could do all that stuff. It's yes. just not necessary. Yeah. So I know that we've, we're short on time because I know that you got to run in 10. What yeah. I wanted yeah. to do as well is we got to give the book plug. Let's talk about your book. Oh boy, my book. <laughs> my, book. my brother's making fun of it. It's like a short story, but basically I was started that book as a like I was like thinking about leaving my job mm. and I also was having my first kid at the same time like this was like a lot of conflicting stuff like you want to have the stability but like I don't feel like I'm living to my fullest potential here so I started just I have I have like you know tons more like just things I would wait I always wake up early even if I if I worked at midnight I stayed up that little what, bit what's early for you early like like five yeah, like, I mean, because I used to work people 10 have to different six. definitions. That's yeah, early, and early <laughs> yeah. Fine. Like, I'll be up, I like to be up before everybody else, gotcha. and I'll usually just sit down. My thoughts just you always have stuff rattling around, so I used to just write stuff out, and it was almost like a writing to myself about why I should leave, like why I should leave this job, mm. and that's how like you know the dominate your life came up because everyone's like you know you're cra literally just think about every person you're talking to telling you what you want to do is crazy from family to coworker yep. to, to wife was neutral on it because she knew how I was and like I, I wasn't going to just stay home and be like hey I'm done that I was going to drive somewhere else but like every single person like you can't do that because of this you can't do that because of that so all I kept hearing was you can't you can't you're crazy you're crazy you're crazy so I almost started this as like 
just let me get my thoughts out. And it was almost like my counter to everyone who said you can't do it. That's That's, interesting. So it just naturally occurred. And that's that's why I dropped it. Like I I put it out a year later because I wanted to make sure I made it through the first year, didn't regret any of my choices. But that's how it kind of started in that sense of like, hey, you know what? These are the reasons. They might not work for everybody, but maybe there's someone out there. If I would have read that book six years ago, I would have been more motivated to see it because I, I would have believed it could be done. So that's why. And it's, again, it's really short. You're talking like 30-something pages. It's not like I a have long a copy. Book. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, I you do. read it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So you see it, but you see my mindset. Yeah. Um, some people be like, you're nuts. Yeah. But that's how, this is just how I've, I've based my life. So that's kind of where I, I put it out. And that's why I have a couple more that I want to do, like a Dominate Your Income is coming out next. Because a lot of people gotcha. don't realize, yes, I did. the. Uh, yes, it's crazy. Leave it. I didn't just be like, hey, you know what, guys? I'm out. I was down to the penny with budgeting, with finance, how I look at how I spend money. And that's what people say like, oh, you're doing well now. Like you wouldn't tell I look exactly the same now as I did yeah. back then, no matter how I'm doing. Meticulous planning. Yeah, I, um, yeah. that's that's not what I'm, I will spend on certain things now, but those are one times. My monthly cash flow is like, I protect that. Yeah. You know, like if we're in prison, we're cellmates, I got a ship, I'm protecting that. And that's flow. what your lifestyle is yes. based around. Something that I'm sure you say the same thing that I say to I say to my clients. It's not necessarily the price of a house that matters, it's your monthly payments. Yes. Right, because a, a, pri- a property for 400 in, you know, wherever somewhere in Nassau can be the same monthly payment as a house for 650 in Queens. Exactly. You know, so it's like, there's more to it. So, you, so you're protecting that. So yeah. who is the book for? The book was kind of like for a future me out there mm. who doesn't have anyone to turn to maybe be like, everyone think you're crazy for thinking that you can do this on your own and that you can actually do what you love and be happy about it. Like yeah. everyone, remember, I worked with people like we all, not not many of us like, hey, we love, it, especially in the environment now, like nobody really loves being a cop. It's been, it's just been ruined. Uh, obviously, yeah. So like, you know, we all just were sitting there like, oh, but this is what we have to do because this is what our parents did and that's what everyone tells us to do. And like, we keep taking advice from people who then later on down the road, all the people who gave financial advice are now- And they haven't achieved what you're looking yeah. to achieve. And they're sitting there like worried about retirement. I'm like, well, then you didn't, like, why am I following the advice that I'm giving? Like, I want to listen to successful people. Yeah. The problem is where I was at that time. I'm like, I wasn't surrounded by much like entrepreneurial success. Like there's plenty of people who do very well. Of it's there's there's a path you can go. You could do the employee W-2 pension, uh, you know, retirement accounts, mm. no debt, things like that. That's also a way there's there's a million ways to get there. This was just my way. So I wanted to share my way with everybody else. And maybe it'll hit somebody who's who's like at a crossroads to say, you know what? And I, funny enough, at a party not too long ago, um, CPA worked for uh, Henry Shine, big company, mm, yeah. left his job, started a side business, saw my story, left his job. So I helped somebody else leave Th- their job. That alone makes it worth it. That's what I'm saying. You know, so that's just, why I kind of wanted to go yeah. a little bit more into Cause, that. Because the purpose of the book, obviously, you know, it's, it's a small book. It's yeah. not to, to make money. No. It's, it's just, it's to give something back in, in, a, in a small way. Yeah. Right. So it's like, if, you, if you're so fortunate, which you are, obviously you've hard work, sacrifice, all that stuff, but there's still an element of, you know, you've been put in that position from whether it's your parents or you're just naturally born that way. And, yeah. you know, we're lucky. We're very, very fortunate to do what we do and make the type yes. of income that we do. More importantly, have the opportunity. So I think when you have the ability to to give that to someone else, it's it's like it's a good deed. It's a mitzvah. You know, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. And, you know, that person, I'm sure, is grateful to you. Yeah. And that's like one of the things like people say, like I'll come, people come to me a lot of times for like other advice, yeah. be business advice, because the whole efficiency stuff, people tell me they're doing stuff I'm like this is just too like the, this is wrong. Let's not do it like this because yeah. you could be doing it. This and my wife's taxis and she does what she started. Like she had left her job years ago. She was doing like 10 clients a year yeah. and she slowly morphed and we built the process to like, she now can't meet with 400 people every tax course, season, yeah. but it's the same operation we had as when we did, because I, I'm putting all those systems in place every year when she's like, you know, down there till nine o'clock at night and work. I'm like, okay, this is cause now I'm watching the kids yeah. for f- how many hours? I'm like, this reverts back to my laziness. Like, no, no, this is not going to happen. <laughs> We're going fi- to, I'm going to fix this for self-preservation. <laughs> yeah. So that's just how like, you know, people come to me for a lot of different things. And I, I go as the real estate guy, but, I mean, people come to me for life stuff, for yeah. business stuff, because it just... Well, because you kind of have 
everything figured out in a way. I mean, obviously, we don't know everything. Yeah. And there's always new challenges, but, you know, and it's also a subject that a lot of people don't feel comfortable talking about unless they know that you're an expert at yeah. it, which is income because yeah. income finance is very personal. Yeah. You know, so it's like if they're comfortable with you and you can give them advice, that's, you know, it's, it's another huge bonus. Yeah. So what is what is next for you? I know that you're kind of done building the empire. What are your next next projects or if it's a passion project business? Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch. There's the, on the mortgage side, I think I'm my goal is to really in get Madison and Austin, a smaller team, but like a very unique team. Um, still in in the in the law enforcement because there's a lot of bigger groups and bigger companies that prey on that what yeah. they do is they want they want relationships with them because they'll pay the union they'll do whatever they can to get in there yeah they're never going to get the referral business because no one's and really it, happy and it's interesting why you use the word prey and yes. it really it feels oh, look, that it's way w-2 salaries great jobs like they, these are i mean that's why my loans go through they're super clean because yeah. these are the these are the type of loans people want if you know how to calculate ot and other types yeah of things, exactly exactly <laughs> which a lot of people don't which yeah. yeah and a lot of places won't count as much as we do but yeah. So like all these places, the business model is like, just get into the unions, sponsor whatever you can, get in there and just get out to the people. So you can use, I mean, I have an open invitation to go to you now the Port Authority commands and talk to the guys about mortgage, whatever it is, I can yeah. go whenever I want. That's not through, I wasn't, that's not bought. That's, yeah. That was earned. And that's what a lot of these places will continually try. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they do. They just, that their whole business model is just go after cops and firemen and unions and get in there, sell whatever you have to do, donate what you have to do, get in front of the people, get them on their, you know, whatever they can do. And that's it. Because once you have, the, if you did it right, it's a home run. Like what we do is amazing, but it's genuine. These yeah. other companies are just doing it. It's like, it's a business technique. And once you, you know, when they do their no junk fees, no this fee. Oh, if I use the one the union recommended me, I, I won't pay for this. I'm like, you just pay somewhere else. Yeah. It's just the same. They just, they just move it to another oh, section. I hear a lot of times, like, they have a special program for me. I'm like, the government <laughs> does not have a special loan program for anybody. That's it. It's all the same. It's the so, same stuff, just marketing yeah so and, and a lot of banks will basically market themselves as if they are the government yes, they use yes. very very special yes. wording and then you you see fine print at the bottom of the yep. page so and so co a company on broad hollow road yeah but it looks like it's a, an official letter i even got one today yeah I, yeah i opened it five minutes before we started i'm just like oh great yeah you know no no that's that's like so in a, in a sense of that mortgages like i like what we're doing we're gonna do more of it um, as long as I can control the flow. Like we were crazy last year. I don't want to get that crazy again. We're yep. doing the 12 and 16 hour days, but our process is just streamlined so much. So the point is like, I put loans in and like, we're done in four days. I'm like, all right guys, well now I gotta go get another one here. This, yeah. <laughs> this is a little too quick. Yep. But so on that side, that's what we're gonna keep just kind of expanding where we are and helping as many cops and first responders as we can. The book thing, I, I definitely, a lot of the feedback I got from the first one was like, I love this, but yeah. how? Mm. Like, where do I go? How do I start? So that's why I'm thinking like the dominate your income thing is going to be to really break down the budget I use to get myself out of there. Have you ever considered coaching, like coaching people one on one? And here's here's we just I talked about this the other day. I enjoy helping people. Mm -hmm. I enjoy helping people on my terms. Mm -hmm. And the problem with the coaching stuff is once there's money involved now, now I have to make you a pamphlet and stuff and we could just shoot the shit. Yeah. And I could cover whatever you need in one shot. But like as soon as you do it as a business, like, well, I paid for something. Where is it? It's like, let's just let's just talk it out. Gotcha. I think like a more towards the not for property type stuff would be in the future. Well, and it also complements your other businesses yes, too. So it'll all kind of hand. filter in like the book stuff filters back in because it makes me a person of, you know, of expertise. And that's really at the point I think we're gonna, I wanna reach more people. I think there's a lot of people in my situation more than I knew of that would want some help. And there's always real estate. Real estate is it for me. Like I, there's no other investment I think I wanna do. You know, there's people who do the market, things like that. I'm just, this is what I know. This is what I'm great at. I could find you know a solution ten ways over to finance something, just because I've done it. I've been in the trenches. So, I think that's where I'm going with a lot of you know projects. Probably another. There, there will be more real estate. I think I have maybe one or two more in the works before Fannie and Freddie shut me down. But uh, yeah, we'll work around that. I bought it before. I've done loans when I had no income. I've done loans with income. So yeah. you know, like you just you find a deal, you make it work, yeah. and that's that's kind of uh, on the real estate perspective. That's where we're going. On the mortgage stuff, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing and just jamming along, you know, Sweet. locking up units in a way that we can manage. And that's really it. Be a dad, be home, be around. I don't want to miss stuff. You know, everyone says like, oh, you know, your kids grow up so fast. Like I'm with them all day. Yeah. 
And you, you're, you're extremely fortunate. And, yeah. and I'm using the word fortunate, not lucky, because yeah. that wasn't an accident. You designed that as of you know, 13, right. 14 years ago with yeah. that in mind. And it's just adapted and our goal, our, our goal, our big thing is our goals every year. Like we write them down and they man, somehow manage to always make it through whether you put the craziest stuff down on paper. But if once it's out there and you're looking at it, somehow the universe kind of makes it. And, and your wife is on board with that stuff. You're working oh, yeah. as a team. She's a, she, yeah, she's a, she has her own stuff. And like we're always we've always been everything we do together just works. So um, like that's just where we're you know, where we're at, what we're looking to do. I want to just be around. And like I said, like I said our, our, everyone says our kids grow fast. Like yep. so do we. I'm yeah. only 40 once. You know, like, so we also have this time that we don't want to put aside to be like, hey, I want to I'm going to put it somewhere I don't want to be like this is every day is mine. I own every day. Yep. And that's how it's going to be. And that's kind of future of, I guess, whatever. Love it. Yeah. Awesome, man. So, Mr. Grosso, um, tell the people how how can people find you, contact you, social media, phone? What, what do you prefer? Uh, Instagram would be probably the best. You know, that's the Ant the real estate guy. And the real estate. Yeah. Guy. With the dashes under each word. All righty. One of. Madison Mortgages, finest Mr. Anthony Grosso, entrepreneur extraordinaire. Thank you so much, man. Thank we, you. We appreciate your time. Appreciate it. And here's another outro that I'm making because we don't have one yet. See you guys. Ciao.